is Alyssa Young. I'm a, I'm a sophomore at Queen Anne's County High School. This is Marissa Morrison. I'm also a sophomore at Queen Anne's County High School. And I'm Ryan Baggs, again a sophomore at Queen Anne's County High School. Recently in this past July we went to a CADCA conference which is Communities Against Drugs Coalitions of America and in the CADCA conference there was an NYLI which is National Youth Leadership Initiative and that focuses on the teens against the drugs and alcohol of their community. And so we went to this conference and we learned the strategic prevention for framework and from there we came up with the problem situation that was the main issue in Queen Anne's County, Maryland. And our problem statement was the underage drinking in Queen Anne's County, Maryland. The, um, what we use to prove this is the statistics of the drinking, which is in grade six, almost 1% of the students are drinking almost 10 by grade 8 and 25% uh, by 10th grade and over 50% of seniors in high school are drinking alcohol. Um, we also created, so once we got our problem statement, we did the but why. Why is this happening? Why are the uh, minors drinking? And we came up with a few things. We came up with big life changes like going into a new high school or going into high school or up death in the family. We also came up with social status. Kids going into high school want to be more popular or they want to fit into a certain crowd. So they'll try and bump up their social status by drinking. Um, they have no, they have a less of a favorable attitude or no activities to do afterwards. So they find another outlet and rebelliousness against their parents or guardian or school in general. Um, also, there, there is a very big rate of family of alcoholism in Queen Anne's County, Maryland. And so alcohol, alcoholism is passed down through families. It is, you get, have a higher likelihood of, doing alcohol, of drinking alcohol. And so that was another one of the major reasons why. And also the accessibility through the parents and the stores so providing for underage drinkers and stuff like that. It's very easy to assess, al to as assess alcohol in, in Queen Anne's County. There was also a lack of parental presence in our community. Um, a lot of the parents commute to work so they're not home all the time and the children find something to do and a lot of times they start drinking. And also there's a community norm where Drinking is almost a rite of passage in our county, so a lot of the uh, families will provide the alcohol and say that this is how you become an adult. So we focused in on the two that we thought were the biggest issues in our community, which would be the parental attitudes and consent of drinking and the fact the community norms and laws that aren't, are and are not followed. Yeah. Um, for the parental attitudes and consent, uh, the parents seem to be going to liquor stores and buying and supplying kids with parties. Um, the parents don't seem to have any consequences towards the kids if they found that they were drinking behind their backs. And the parents really don't care anymore. They just give it and are like, go have a fun time, just try not to get in trouble. And then the bad role models, the parents are not even setting a good example for their children. And as a cycle, it would be passed down to their children's children. Uh, the community laws and norms, it's seen as a right of passage in our community so that you aren't considered a technical adult until you drink alcohol, even if you are underage. And also the stores are selling to underage minors either to boost their profits or to get a bigger network for when they're older. And also there's a lot of social parties like bonfires and stuff where alcohol is served and the communities are allowing this. And the public usage in public places, there's a lot of drinking going on, even if it's noticed or not. And there's a bunch of uh, signs and stuff advertising alcohol, which encourages underage minors to drink. The next step is to figure out why this is happening specifically in our community. And we took two points of the reasons why it's happening, and we spe specified it more to our county. 
with the parents supplying, they give it that it's all over the homes. It's easy reach. It's really just there, and there's not no. a whole lot of parental guidance to say no, don't drink that. And they're also giving it to their children and allowing them going to parties where there's going to be drinking at other people's houses or beaches or bonfires. And then from the community laws and norms, um, like at social gatherings right here, <laughs> uh, they seem to go like thunder on the narrows. Some parents don't even care if their 16 year old is drinking out in public and when they get stopped by someone by it, they don't seem to really notice. And then the alcohol suppliers, um, they're checking most of the time, but for some reason there are still cases where stores are still selling to minors even if they know. And so, for, we decided to focus in on one problem, which would be the underage drinking in Crayons County, Maryland, and the but why we chose was community laws and norms. The but why here was the alcohol suppliers serving the minors. This is like a, a plan to prevent it. And step one would be providing info, and that would be handing out and supplying information, like you know that it's illegal, right? and the, so saying what the consequences are. And there's also training, which would be uh, like the tips, the tips training, which is training for intervention procedures so that they don't sell to minors and they know how to say no to sell to minors. And then providing support, like we could start a, gr like, um, a group where the stores that are good help the stores that are selling to minors and help them get out of that so that they could be a better store. It's almost like a Big Brothers Big Sister program which is a program where older children are paired up with a younger child to help them try and say no to alcohol and drugs like and things like that so it'd be the more experienced uh, liquor suppliers and all and stores would be like kind of watching over the newer ones or the ones that have been repeatedly selling to minors. There, uh, we would do, we would create more of a barrier to the um, option of selling by provide, uh, having them have a license card reader where it'll read the license that they scan under it and it won't, you can't sell them alcohol unless it is a valid license. Um, another thing we could do is changing the consequences. We could increase the fines and, the, and decrease the number of penalties you need to have your license revoked because people aren't realizing how serious of a problem underage drinking is. And also we can change physical design, like saying that you have to take down certain signs and putting up signs that say alcohol under 21 is illegal. And finally, we could change policies by maybe requiring license card readers in all alcohol sales distributors. We have come up with a nine step process to try and stop the uh, use of alcohol by minors and these are our main goal is to create a video that will be given out to most mostly parents of underage children and can put up signs around the neighborhood. Yeah and we would this is mainly to focus in on the, ha the parents who are allowing it because in focusing on the parents you also get some of the people who are working in the liquor stores and who like are on the are in law enforcement and so they can increase consequences and actually make a big difference and so our first step was to do research on what has worked in other counties and what may work here based on like similarities between the counties and stuff like that and we could also look up some of the psychology on how to persuade people on to saying that stuff, this stuff is wrong. Another thing we could do is create a website and a Facebook page to provide public access to the information and it's not no costing to them so that it's free so no matter what anyone can get it. 
we also are going to start um, contacting people to help us make the video. We are going to ask QAC TV to hopefully help us film and air this video. Um, we're going to ask the drama teacher to help us with props, costumes, and maybe some actors to be in our video. The local law enforcement, we would like to ask for help in order to have them in the video to show what will happen, along with an insurance agent that can also be part of our video. Um, we're going to go through and write scripts and make props, so the whole production piece. Um, we're going to get law enforcement to help us with that in certain scenes we might have them help us. Um, we'll have a parent of some youth help along with us to make or use the props. Um, we're going to have state, attorney. state attorneys help us a little bit more. Um, a circuit court judge, there we go, help us a little bit more when it goes from the party to what happens afterwards. And then the Juvenile Services Warden, Warden of the Detention Center um, maybe help us a little bit more in that. We will, in making of the video, we will have both an English and a Spanish voiceover so that we uh, it can be understood by more people. And we will include a wide variety of um, cultural differences. So we will have a lot of ethnicities in the video so we're not just trying to target one specific group. We will also, in order to fund all of this, fundraise in the classrooms at like Queen Anne's County High School by making it into a competition. Whichever first period raises the most amount of money can have a donut party or something in the classroom. Breakfast. Breakfast party. Yeah. And then we, from there, once we have all the money and, all, and the video and such, we will burn it onto CDs, like a bunch of them, and then we would distribute them through the mail, hand them out at different community events and we could even possibly we'll post this on the website and Facebook and hopefully air it on QAC TV. And at the very and at the very end we would make signs reminding everyone of what this video was for and what we were targeting. And that is our plan. And so basically we hope that everyone would be supportive of us and help in any way they can because we wish to make Queen's County, Maryland a safer place for teens.